Up next on Lion TV, Jordan brings us a brand new line of the week. Lexi and Ashley cook up a new episode of The Dish. And me, Dakota Johnston, to tell you what the weather's going to be like for Friday's game. All that and more, Lion TV starts now. What's good, ghosts and ghouls? I'm Drew Thurman. And I'm Lexi Farron. Now let's jump right into those announcements. The high school baseball team tryouts will be held on December 2nd, 3rd, and 4th from 3.30 to 5 each day at the baseball field. Anyone who is interested in trying out needs to sign up with Coach Davis or Coach Gardner after 8th period or via school email as soon as possible. Arkansas School for Math and Science will be visiting our campus in the Guidance Center November 10th at 10.30 a.m. If any 9th or 10th grade students are interested in attending, please email Ms. Cleveland at ccleveland at circeschools.org. Beginning Monday, November 2nd, the cafeteria will be offering additional a la carte beverages and snacks for sale at designated registers. The requested items will be handed to each student by a cafeteria employee. All lunch meals will, be, will continue to be free, but students will have funds in their cafeteria account or cash in hand to pay for these additional snack and beverage items. Deposits may be made online at mypaymentsplus.com or at one of the designated registers in the cafeteria. Deaths per day from the coronavirus in the U.S. are on the rise again, just as health experts had feared, and the cases are climbing in practically every state. With Election Day just over a week away, average deaths per day across the country are up 10% over the past two weeks, from 721 to nearly 794 as of Sunday, according to data from John Hopkins University. Newly confirmed infections per day are rising in 47 states and deaths are up in 34. An Arkansas man is facing felony charges after being accused by authorities of stabbing his parents because he ran out of cigarettes. The Centennial Record reported Friday that Carl Thomas Lane is facing up to 20 years in prison for allegedly stabbing and injuring his father and mother at their home in Hot Springs. Police say Lane's mother told officers that her son became upset about not having cigarettes and a lighter and became violent towards her and her husband on Tuesday evening. The 36-year-old son then stabbed his mother and father with a knife and later fired a BB gun at them at least once, according to sources. The moon's shadowed frigid nooks and crannies may hold fro frozen water in more places and in larger quantities than previously sus suspected. And for the first time, the presence of water on the moon's sunlit surface has been confirmed by scientists when they reported Monday. That's good news for astronauts at lunar bases who could tap into those resources for drinking water and making rocket fuel. While previous observations have indicated millions of tons of ice in the permanently shadowed craters of the moon's poles, a pair of studies in the journal Nature Astronomy take the availability of lunar surface water to a new level. More than 15,400 square miles of lunar terrain have the capability to trap water in the form of ice, according to a team led by the University of Colorado's Paul Hain. That's 20% more um, area than previous estimates, he said. Oh wow, moving right along, we have today's Line of the Week with Jordan Benite. Take it away, brother. Hey Cersei, it's me, Jordan Benite with your Line of the Week. This week we have soccer player Emmy Bailey. So how does soccer change with the new COVID guidelines? Soccer hasn't really changed that much um, since it is an outdoor sport, but since it is a contact sport, we just get delayed in some of our games. So how did you feel the soccer team performed this year? Um, this spring for high school, we did lose our season, so we only got to play five games. But in those five games, I thought we played really well and we would have had a good spot of state. So what position do you play on the soccer team and what does that mean? I am a center back, so I am the last person before the goalkeeper, so I prevent the other team from scoring goals with my other center back and outside backs. So what is the hardest part of soccer? The hardest part is probably just having the mental mentality to stay focused and the running and the work together as a team. So what's your personal favorite part of soccer? My favorite part of soccer would be just the team and be getting to be with them every day, five days a week, and then again on the weekends for travel ball, and we're like a family. Well, Cersei, that's all we have for you today. Let's kick it back to the news desk.
That was awesome, Jordan. Yes, that was astounding. Now let's send it right on over to Dakota Johnson with some weather updates. Good morning, Cersei High School. I'm Dakota Johnson here to give you your weather updates once again for this week. So today it's going to be cloudy with showers with a 50% chance of rain. Your high is a 55. Our winds are going west northwest at 14 miles per hour. Your humidity is at 90% and your sun rose at 725 in the morning. On to tonight. So for tonight, it's going to be cloudy with showers and the rain is going to be at about 30% chance. You have a low of 36. Your winds are going north northwest at 11 miles per hour. Your humidity is at 90% and as well, your sunset was at 614. On to the almanac. Now for your almanac, your last seven day temperatures have been a high of 85 and then you've also had a low of 46. The monthly average of precipitation is 4.70 and our month to date is 1.50. On to the five cast. So Friday we have sunny skies with a high of 55 and a low of 35 with a 10% chance of rain. Saturday it'll be partly cloudy with a 61 degree high and a 43 degree low at a 10% chance of rain. Sunday it's going to be 57 for your high, 34 for your low and 10% chance of rain. Monday it'll be 55 for your high, 36 for your low with a 0% chance of rain. And Tuesday it's going to be sunny with a high of 64 and a low of 40 and a 0% chance of rain. So it looks like Saturday is going to be our only like partly cloudy day but other than that it's going to be sunny for the rest of the week. Back to the news desk. Thanks for the info Dakota, now let's see what's for lunch. Today for lunch we'll be having Max Cheese Sticks Stromboli Marinara Sauce, Cheesy Roasted Squash Medley, Baked Cinnamon Apples, Fresh Grapes, Cinnamon Crisp, and Milk. Be sure to thank our hardworking lunch ladies for preparing our tasty feasts. Speaking of yummy meals, up next is another installment of The Dish with me and Ashley Coker. I can't wait to see what y'all make. The dish will be making brownie batter candy corn cookies. But we can't bake with our hair down. Nope. Much better. Now let's get to bake candy cakes. So first you're going to want to put your mix in the bowl and then add in your ingredients. But since we're aiming to make cookies and this is brownie batter, we're going to add some flour just to get the consistency just right. So now that it's all mixed and mixed up, we're going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. I'm just going to put them on the pan and a line and then another line and then another line, okay? Then once they're all set out, you can go ahead and put them in the oven. So to make different color icing, you're going to need three bowls, plenty of icing, we got cream cheese kind, and three different colors of food coloring. The two colors that we chose were white, yellow, and orange. We're making piping bags out of Ziploc bags and we're going to put each color in each bag so we can zig 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 on the cookies. Now that the cookies are all done, now it's time for the fun part. Decorating. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Dish. Stay safe and have a happy Halloween. Wow, Lexi, that sure does look tasty. Now let's jump right into what is happening in the world of sports with Bethany Ellis. What's up, Cersei? It's Bethany Ellis with your sports. Tomorrow is senior night at Lions Stadium. Festivities will be held at 6.30, and then the Lions go against El Dorado Wildcats. Let's go cheer on our team. Florida has had one of college football's most explosive offenses this season, but the Gators are making sure their defense is filled with blue chip talent for the future as well. On Monday, Florida received the verbal commitment of four-star defensive end Jeremiah Williams. A 6'3", 224-pound edge rusher from Ramsey High School in Birmingham, Alabama, Williams received numerous Power 5 scholarship offers. He chose the Gators over Auburn, Alabama and other Blue Blood programs and made his announcement on his Twitter account. Life after Tom Brady is suddenly bleak for the Patriots.
Cam Newton said on Monday he was, quote, embarrassed over his performance in the Patriots' 33-6 loss to the 49ers on Sunday that dropped the team to 2-4. Coach B Bill Belchick said Newton was, quote, absolutely the starter going forward after he pulled the veteran late in the game. Well, Cersei, that's it for today. Let's send things back to the anchors. Thank you so much for those updates, Bethany. This week's Thankful Thursday selections are Janet Wright and Amy Dutton. If you see them around, make sure to congratulate them. Well, it seems we have come to the end of today's episode of Lion TV. Make sure to subscribe for, to our YouTube channel, Cersei High Lion TV. And follow us on Twitter at Lion TV, Instagram at Cersei Lion TV, and Facebook at Cersei High Lion TV. Signing off, I'm Lexi Farron. And I'm Drew Thurman. Have a happy Halloween.